Welcome to another Liquid Bullet production. Uh, joining me today, doesn't really need any introduction, is Mr. Brian Jacks. How are you doing, Brian? Good morning, Lee. How are you? All right. Thanks I'll, for having me. I'm just going to run through a little list here. So you've been uh, quite little active list. in your life here, Brian. A little bit, yeah. Uh, TV show, This Is Your Life. That's correct. TV superstar. He's also British and European champion in that. Yeah. Also in um, ranked three in the world's finalist as, yeah, as well. Right, yeah. Um, autobiography, mind of a champ, mindset of a champion, and what you're most known for, judo, <laughs> tenth yeah, degree yeah. black belt, uh, Olympic medalist, 1972, world champion medalist, 1976, and you've also won seven European medals. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So Brian, can we uh, just mainly, mainly gold one? Yeah. Yeah, gold <laughs> one. <laughs> So can we just step back to uh, to the beginning, part or where you grew up and where you were born, yeah, etc. Sure, yeah, yeah. I was. Um, I, my father was a taxi driver, London cab driver. Um, unusual as well because he um, he did the knowledge of London, you know, learning all the roads in London in just on seven months, which was on a push bike. Um, now they say it takes four years, three yeah, or four years. Right, yeah. um, he, all my aunties and uncles are cab drivers, and anybody that saw this is your life that I was on quite a while back now, uh, there was 11 of me uncles and cousins that drive cabs and they were all on this is your life, so um, I come from the east end of London, born in Stepney, um, um, I'm a true Cockney, I, I, love, I loved Great Britain, let's put it mildly, yep. um, <laughs> I th I, uh, and uh, I've been very passionate about my country and, until a few years back when I decided um, you know, health and safety was getting a bit heavy and this was getting out. I thought, oh, bugger it, you know. Yeah, it's gone a bit so crazy now. I live a lot years. of time abroad and I can't go backwards and forwards now. Yeah. So to what, to what age did you start getting interested into judo and how did you get into that? Well, <clears throat> my dad, as I said, was a taxi driver. Um, I, at the time I was eight years old, he, uh, he, he really wanted to, to learn a bit of self-defence. Um, he wanted to lose a bit of weight, and he wanted to keep fit. Um, so he wanted three things. So he did judo because he, because match, a, he was a tight-fisted so and stuff. <laughs> and uh, he got he got the benefit of three things out of doing one, and that was judo. And um, he, he he did it for about uh, a year and a half before I knew. You know, I didn't know as a child that he where he was going. Um, and uh, he said to me one day, he said, "Come, on, we're going to." I'm going to a judo competition. I said, well, what, what is judo? I didn't know anything about it. It was nine, I think it was nine at the time. He said, uh, it's, the, it's a, a sport where you throw people on their back and hold them down. And I'm thought, oh, you know, at nine years old, you don't really give a hoot, do you? <laughs> but I went to see him, and he, it was the London taxi drivers team versus the Metropolitan Police oh, at right. the Chelsea Town Hall. And um, I get there, and I... The, you know, the, the two teams came out, the policemen, and at that time, I don't know if you're <coughs> aware of it, but police had to be six foot tall. Yeah. yeah and right. my dad's only five foot eight, so this big copper comes out, and my dad's down there, and he's up there, and uh, um, a couple of fights, and the third, he was the, the third fight, I think, they bowed, and the referee said, begin, and he took hold of the guy, then moved three steps to one side, and he swept the policeman's feet away and, and won the contest in about three seconds. And um, I, I, I got interested there and then, because obviously because you know of your dad. So yeah, so it inspired you to want to yeah. get involved. And um, ever since then, to be honest, I've, 
I've tried to beat people in under three seconds. But <laughs> I, I beat them in like eight seconds, five seconds, but never, never three. Um, I don't know whether it was a fluke what he did, but it was a beautiful technique. He just, they went sideways, like, you know, skipping that way, and he just slid his, and he's bang, bang, that was it. And this big copper went on the floor, it was fantastic, you know. And uh, that was the motivation. And yeah, to get you involved. Yeah. So, so did you go into the judo straight after that, at that age? Or? Yeah, more or less straight into it. Straight I, into I, I did it at the London Judo Society, which is in Vauxhall. And um, I, I I don't know, I, 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 I took to it straight away. I just thought it was great fun, because you, if you're fighting, you know, and when yeah. you're a kid, you, you know, we used to go over the woods and play um, Robin Hood with bows and arrows and fight each other. and. Um, you know, so, you know, yeah. soldiers and all that, and it was, and judo was just perfect for it because you could whack someone on the back in a couple of seconds. You know, throw the kids around the, around the block. I lived in Sydenham in, in South East London, and uh, you know, my dad was, as I say, was a cab driver, and just took to it like, you know, loved it. Yeah. And then um, when I was when I was about 13, 14, he he, he thought that I had, you know, I would, because I was good. He thought I had a lot of chances, so he, he decided to send me off to Japan to train at oh, the wow. age of 15. I was you 15 went on years, your own to Japan? Yeah, I, went, I, was, I was 15 years old on the day that I left. Blimey. And um, uh, I just you know, stayed with a Japanese family. The guy, the guy that I stayed with was Ish Ishiro Hatta. He was the, the number one pres president of the World Wrestling, Wrestling Federation, or I think he was a wrestling, yeah, World Wrestling Federation. And um, I stayed at his house, but he was away most of the time, you know, in America, going all around the world because of his job. His wife w was a, a business lady, she was out, so I lived with a Japanese family. Oh. Um, two old ladies, they, one was his mother and the other one was her mother. Did, did they talk English fine? I or never did you spoke have, a word of English. You know, how was the communication? I, I was, I was, if, Especially if you, at that age, if you yeah, can't. Yeah, if you can imagine Tokyo, you know, is there. We were on the edge of Tokyo, and to to get anywhere, I had to go on a on a, on the underground and the trains. And I mean, in 1961 or six, yes, yeah, 1961, everything was in these Japanese characters all over the shop. Right? You stand in the station, you think now, which one, do I get on that side of the train, or do I go over there and get on that? Because you don't know what. Don't know it's all about. it's all weird, you know. Um, but I, you soon learn, you know, if you, if you cry a little bit now and again, you think, Christ, I'm on this bloody train, it's 32 stops before I get to my stop. I don't want to get off in case I get the wrong train back. You know, you get all confused and so on. But it was a great experience because um, to put, you know, a, a 15, when I look back on it, to put a 15 year old out uh, in Japan on, on your own, yeah. it's just, you know, I'm surprised it's that. It's quite challenging for a 15 year old, really, to be. You don't talk the language, you no, don't know right, where you right. are. It's quite I've got a clue where you are. You don't speak the language. And people kept coming up to me and touching my hair, going, oh, but I'm, you because know, it, was, it weren't that long after the, after the war. Yeah. Um, people come up and touch your hair and want to speak to you. And um, it, it was uh, a great experience, you know, being, being there at 15. And I, I, of course, I, I trained there and um, everybody on the mat beat the hell out of me. I mean, you didn't have a chance, you know, because the judo was so backward here than it was in Japan. I mean, yeah. Japan's the country where it started and I got walloped about a bit. Did, did they use, like, like in Thailand, the, all the kids that go to the schools and that do the Thai boxing, don't they? Is, is that the same in Japan with the judo? Was that oh, yeah, like a... Yeah, definitely. I mean, sort of I mean mandatory. Um, yeah, they, they do judo, karate, aikido and kendo. They're the, they're the four four main sports. So, where where we used to do PE in school here, I mean, I'm, I'm you know I qualified as a PE teacher. I qualified, um, so I was teaching PE. If I'd have qualified in Japan, say, it would have been teaching judo, ju judo, karate, uh, kendo, and so on. You know, and it's their their you know their sports, their martial arts. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're the they're the greatest at it. You know. How did the Japanese treat you out there? Were they um, accommodating with you, or did they sort of? I, I, I mean, on the mat, I got bunk, bunk, you know thrown about a bit. I got smashed about a bit, but um, I, I think it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me because if you if you think about um, getting good at something, 
You, you've got to learn the, the hard way, haven't you? Yes. And I definitely yeah. learned the hard way. Train, I, train with the best. Got smashed if you want to be the best. All over the place, yeah. <laughs> um, but it was a great experience, and I mean, uh, you know, I got my black belt when I was 15. Um, was I that got, in Japan as well? Yeah, in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fought in the in the lineup, and I got I got to, uh, later on in years, uh, about four years after I'd been the first time, five years after, I actually got my fourth down in Japan. Oh wow! And that's in a lineup. So what happens is, all the third dan's book in and then they just put one 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 and have two teams and I, you, I fight the first one over there and if I beat him I fight the second one on that side and the third one on that side if you if you beat five one after the other you go up automatically and uh, I was you know I beat five one after the other went up to the fourth down um, and uh, I, you know, I went back quite a few times you know there backwards and forwards to train um, and knowing a bit, you know, a bit about the language and how to travel there, it was easy because I used to take like Angelo Prezi, who was a, a British competitor, I, Dave, you know, Dave Stoll, and other people. I used to take them over to Japan and um, you know show them around and that. So it was quite nice. How, how did you find the training when you come back from Japan, like in, in Britain, compared to there? Well, the, the very, very first time, Lee, I came back. Um, I, I went when I was 15, I came back when I was just before I was 17. Um, and I went in a competition thinking I was Billy Big Boots. Um, and because the, the tech, the, they're very technical over there and the, they're very light and the, the technique is very soft. But over here, it was very stiff, you know. And I, of course, I, I didn't do very well in the first competition. So uh, Dad pulled me out and we trained for six months on weight, you know, weight training and getting a bit you know, used to the British style. Um, so I was lucky really because m my dad was very good at looking forward on things. Yeah. So w we trained like that and got, you know, much stronger. Um, but I also had the, had the floppy technique, you know, the, yeah, the easy the Japanese the technique. Both. You must know, I mean, you'd be, in karate, you, you can see someone who's very stiff and, that, and then you see someone who just does it and they're very loose and you think, fuck, they good, you yeah. know. Um, and that's more or less like the Japanese style. They're very easy and um, loose and floppy and light. It's lovely, you know, lovely techniques. Yeah. So to what age did you, or, or what was the process of getting selected to uh, represent the country, Brian? Yeah, well, yeah so um, I came back from Japan and I found the, the, the stiffness of the English people compared to the floppiness. And um, then I... I trained for six months a different, you know, weight training and, and more strength training yeah. with my dad. And then I went in the Olympic trials in 1964 and um, I won the trials. I got, so I was only just 17 then, and I won a place back to go back to Japan in the Olympics in 1964. Oh, so the first Olympics got, was in Japan for yeah, the winter. So I'd been there for two years, came back, got in the British team as a lightweight. There was only four people in the team. I went back to Japan um, for the Olympics. Uh, I, I came eighth in the Olympics, which, which you know, uh, I, at least I won a fight, um, which which was quite a feat, you know, for somebody who's 17 years old. And um, then periodically I went backwards and forwards. You know, I took lots of English people over there that that wanted to train, that became Olympic medalists as well, Angelo Parisi and you know, loads of other people. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of introduced them to the Japanese way of life yeah. and because I spoke it, it was easier to get me. So I went backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And then um, I was coming back one year in 1972. And as I was coming back, the plane landed in Bangkok and uh, um, broke down. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, well, we're going to have to send a new plane. So you're going to be here two nights. So, you know, and they put us up in a hotel. And I got in this hotel, Lee, and I thought, this is, I mean, this was the, 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 the bollocks, you know I mean? Okay, I'm allowed to say that. This was the bollocks. <laughs> I'm sitting in the bath, and at the end of the bath, there was a little TV stuck in the wall. I've never seen that before. I mean, it was, it was not, I mean, now it's a common thing, isn't it? But, Anyway, I'm, I'm in the bath there, I've had, a, I've had a bath and looking at the little television at the end and the phone rings, but you know, the old big, big handle phone yeah. like this. So I picked it up, I said, yeah, can I help you? So he said, yeah, do you want a lady? I said, what? I said, no, I don't want a lady, thank you. I've got the phone down now. 
Anyway, I'm in the bath a bit longer and the phone rings again. Do you want to lay up? No, I don't want to lay the gaps up. Anyway, I get out of the bath, I'm drying off, there's a knock on the door. So I open the door and there's a bloke at the door, a Thai bloke with two girls. I said, do you want a girl? So I said, no, I don't want a girl, no. He went away, come back about 10 minutes, knock on the door again. Do you want a man? I said, no, I don't, I don't know if want a man. <laughs> um, so then I got dressed, I got all my clothes on and everything and went downstairs to because I had two days to, to, yeah. to wait for the flight. And I got into the little bar in a beautiful hotel. I mean, they put us up, I must admit, they did a good job there. And I'm sitting there having a coffee because I don't drink. And a girl comes sitting next to me, a bit petty tiger, a bit stunning little thing. And um, I, she said, what, you know, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, I've just arrived. I'm, I'm here for a couple of days. And she said, would you like to go to the temples and stuff like that? So I said, yeah, yeah, be nice. You know, I said, I'd like to see the seaside as well. Um, being in, in Bangkok, she said, oh, we go down to Pattaya. So we drove down to Pattaya. It took about four hours to get yeah. down. It was a nightmare. Well drive. We got there and, uh, you know, I had a, had a night there and then came back again. Um, it, all in all, it was, it was a wonderful experience. And, and I enjoyed Thailand because it reminded me of Japan back in 60, you know, 61. I yeah. mean, this was 13 years later. Before it was westernised. Yeah, before it was yeah. westernised, yeah. And um, that's what has always dragged me back to, you know, um, spending a, quite a lot of time in Thailand is the fact that it's, it was very similar to Japan. Um, but I love, you know, I, I did love the experience. I love the, the people there. They're, they're all so nice, you know. Yeah. Um, Could, can you just run us through with your, um, obviously you've been in the Olympics <coughs> quite a few number of times there, Brian. Yeah. Can you just run us through your sort of, your, your Olympics stages? Yeah, in, um, as I say, in 64 I went to Tokyo. Um, I came back and then in 1968 the Olympics was in Mexico. Um, but they didn't have judo as, a, as one of the Olympic sports. They had it as a sport, but it, it didn't count in the Olympics because it was in Tokyo because Tokyo picked, Tokyo, the Japanese chose judo to be in the Olympics. And then they voted it in in 68. So I went in 68. Um, although it wasn't the official Olympics, we went as a, as a team of four year. But then I went in 1972 to um, Munich and I won a bronze medal there. And then I went in 19, uh, 1980 to uh, <coughs> Canada. Um, so I've been to four, you know. Um, but the the, the process was a bit different because of, you know, because of not having it in the Olympics in the in the second games. But so I think they've changed the rules now. It, at that time, you, if you had a new sport, like there's new sports coming in now, yeah. like you know, yeah, all the time. Put, uh, what do they call it? Little these little bicycles that they yeah, the little miniature yeah, ones. the little miniature motos, like, motos yeah. mini motos, and they're jumping up and down. They do, that's just coming, and all different sports are coming in. Um, so, but at that time, if you brought a new sport in, you had, you had to be voted in in the next game. So, anyway, I went to four overall, and um, uh, you know. So, how, how did you find like how was your mindset competing at that sort of level with like obviously televised and people watching? Did you find that sort of yeah, more well, pressure in, on in you? Yeah, in 1972, or? they had the the um, the um, problem with the Israelis, didn't they? Um, but uh, the, I don't know. You you. you I, I think once you've been to one, you kind of, you, 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 you grow an inner strength to that, because it is the ultimate event. I mean, for, for, for my sport, in any case, I mean, the, the World Championships, Olympics first, World Championships, and then European Championships, in that order. And um, the Olympics is such, you know, it's, it's such a wonderful, wonderful experience, especially Tokyo, because it all took place on an American army base. Oh, right. Because the, the Americans had been there since the war, and then they took the base over, and we stayed in all the houses on the Ameri all, all the teams from everywhere stayed together on this one village, and it was a fantastic experience because out you could go outside, and there'd be giant chess pieces with a giant chess board, and you know, you'd sit on a chair one side of this big square <laughs> and play chess with each other, and they had discos in the evening, you know. Did, did all, all the time. different countries like they all mingled, mingled in? Yeah. Mingled in yeah. Not only did they mingle in, you, you well, in Tokyo, I think we had fourteen different restaurants on the on the actual 
campus because of all the different sports um, and all the different people. You know, you could go and have Chinese food, Japanese food, um, Indian food. You can have British food in different places, and it was all free. You know, because you had to, the uh, you know the card to to get around everywhere. Um, uh, magnificent. I mean, the experience of being in the Olympics is just beyond anything I've ever done. Um, yeah. You know, the people, all the people are very friendly. Everyone is together. Everyone's pulling together. You know, even though you're actually competing against each other. Yeah. Um, well, I'm just going to throw in a couple of question, the question on, judo questions <laughs> for you, um, for the for the judo fans. What is your favourite judo throw? Um, it's called a chimata, which is uh, it sounds like. A Squash tomato, but it's not. It's a uchimata. It's inner thigh throw. It's a throw where you throw and you, you lift one leg up in the air. That, that's the throw that I've thrown people with quickest. The, the, the quickest I've ever done is six seconds. And that, that's been your from most the, from, successful yeah, throw. Yeah, from, well. from the time the referee says begin, six, it was actually. The, the, I did it in eight seconds in the British in the final of the British Championships. I fought a German lad, and. Uh, um, did it in eight seconds, and I fought another British lad after that, and that that was um, uh, seven, uh, six, seven seconds. But uh, I used to be a bit bombastic, you know. I, I, a lot of a lot of I think a lot of judo is is psychological, you know, when you're going to fight someone. So what I used to do in the final of the British Championships at Crystal Palace, they got one mat, and everybody's watching the one mat. And yeah. They call your name out, and they call it once. They give you one minute to get to the mat, and if you don't come, they call you twice. If you don't come at the end of the third minute, then you can get disqualified. So I, what I used to do in the final is to wait, wait for the, let, them sta let the opponent stand on the mat for three minutes waiting. And <laughs> then everybody in you would come, oh, he ain't coming, oh, he ain't coming. And I'd come out, and I'd polish the top of the rostrum, you know, and then walk on the mat, they'd, they'd gone then, they'd finished. It was a psychological thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sort of where they're drilling out, yeah. where they're waiting. I used to do that quite a bit, you know, put things like, you know, like that. Yeah. Um, just to set out of it psychologically, you know, yeah. you can beat someone. I mean, if I, you know, if you're in a fight situation or something, you know, if you say to them, I'm going to smack you with the left of your mark, you know, and they go, oh, 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 and they get, you know, and they think, Christ, he must be, you know, you get bombastic about it. Yeah. Same in the service. I did the same thing in the service stars, you know, with Danny Thompson. I mean, you might, in one of the super stars, I don't know if the people in, in Britain understand, but <clears throat> when they did the superstars, they did it over two days, and they did four events on one day and four on the other. And the first day, I'd, I'd won two events, come second in two, and I'd already won the whole competition, but they can't show it on TV like that because yeah. it, it makes a mockery how, of it. How did you first get selected for Superstars? How did that come about? Um, I got a phone call from the BBC asking me. I was a, I was a teacher. I was a, um, I was teaching at Woolwich College. Um, I, I was a PE instructor at Woolwich College, and they phoned me and said, "Would I go in it?" And I said, "Yeah, I'd love to," you know, because I've seen it on the TV. And they, um, they said, "Well, it's next weekend." I said, "Nah." And, uh, I, I said, you, you give me like five or six weeks notice and I'll go in it because obviously I wanted a bit of training to, to prepare, prepare for it. Yeah, you know? right. So I gave them Dave Starbrook's number and Neil Adams um, and they phoned Dave and he went in it. Um, but he, he only did well in one event, you know, yeah. it, it didn't do judo any good. So then they phoned me a couple of weeks later and said, would you go in it in seven weeks time? So I said, yeah. I said. Uh, you know, that, that would be great because it would give me... So my dad and I worked out a training program for the superstars. Um, you know, I was cycling in the morning and, you know, all the different... I was doing the arm dips on two old park benches up at Lullingston Golf Course. I'd bring the park benches together and do it in the end, you know, at the end of the bench because you couldn't, you know, you didn't have any parallel who, bars. Who were the other competitors in that that you was competing against? Um, oh... Um, all the top sportsmen of yeah. that time, Lynn Davis, Olympic gold medalist, you know, a lot of the um, uh, the, the boxer, I can't remember his bloody name now, it's good. but Morris Hope, for instance, he was in it, he was a great boxer. Um, Malcolm McDonald, there was loads of, all the famous people there, and the amazing thing was, they were, they were all the best of the best yeah. of the best, yeah. you know, which 
which um, is, is unusual, you know, but you can look it up. But every single, I mean, um, the, the footballers were in it. Georgie, um, not George Best, I think. Um, I can't remember all their names, but Dave Daley Thompson was a big name. Daley Thompson uh, was a big name at the yeah, time. Yeah, the, uh, track and field, wasn't he? But, but all the great competitors were in it. You know, all, all of them. I mean, um, the racing drivers were in it. The right car drivers. Um, how, how did that take over from the judo? How did you find, sort of find these? Well, I, I was very them? fortunately, really, because I was coming to the end of my judo career. Um, you know, I was I was in the British team for like. 19 years, nearly 20 oh, years, and I was coming to the end of it, and I got invited into this. And because I'm a PE teacher by trade, um, you know, I qualified at Avery Hill College. Funnily enough, my the head of department at Avery Hill was Mick, Mick Jagger's father, Joe Jagger. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget it because uh, I did the first year, and I was a bit, well, I was a matured student, and I, you know, I mean, I'm not that clever at writing, but. I had to hand in the first 10,000 word essay and I handed it in and a couple of weeks later it, it was time to get, you know, go in and get the mark so I walked into the desk and he was sitting opposite and, and he was coach, you know, he was teaching us all the time but, and I looked at the desk and I could see my essay with all fucking red lines all over it, all marks <laughs> everywhere and I thought, oh, fuck, here we go. So I, I stood, you know, so I sat down in front of him and he said, sit down Brian, he said, uh, so Brian he said, I'm going to give you an A minus, which is the highest score, one of the highest scores in the year. He said, but you can't fucking spell. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way he said it, you know. I, mean, I thought, oh, <laughs> I thought I was in big trouble. Anyway, yeah. I mean, that, that I'd, so I'd, I was in college in any case, and that helped me with the superstars because I, I knew, technically, um, like if you're going to race a push bike, for instance, you need to get the maximum power on your legs, so you need to measure from the saddle down and all that, you know, I had yeah. all the measurements done, even the, the squat thrust, I was up on my fingers like this, you know, on, on the actual floor to make me higher so you could bring your legs through quicker. Everybody right. else was yeah, doing yeah. it flat handed, which is four inches difference. And everything I tried to do, you know, scientifically, um, according to, you know, what I'd learned up here. So yeah, it, it worked for you. It yeah, worked for me, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it was very good. I mean, the arm dips, for instance, I didn't do them in the upright position because all your weight of your body, if this is your shoulders, all the weight of your body is going up and down like this. I, so I tilted at an angle and... Uh, somebody's just dropped something. I tilted at an angle and did it at an angle because you can flick your legs at the same time, which helps you go forward. Yeah. Um, so it was all technical stuff, you know, that I'd learned at, uh, learned at college, you know, it was, it was great. Did, did uh, being on the Superstars TV show, was that that sort of put you on the map for more TV? Because you was in quite a lot of stuff after that. Obviously, it? yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously, I, um, the, the world kind of exploded after, after the second, you know, after I won the European. Because I won the British Superstars, I was in the Europeans um, three years on the trot. And, uh, you know, people, People associate with you being just quite normal, um, and also being good at sport, you know. And yeah. every, because there's ten different sports, so everyone that was watching could identify with at least one of the sports because they were probably very good at it, you know. Yeah. So that 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 was a, a wonderful thing because I got to a, a massive array of people. Whereas with judo, it was just judo people. One dimension. Yeah, one dimension. The same as karate and, and all other martial arts. They're, they're very one-dimensional, um, but the superstars, people that cycled, people that did weightlifting, you know, I mean, I used to do the clean and, and jerk, you know, um, and, uh, um, swimming, you know, all the different sports, so everybody can identify with something that you were doing, and that, that's what made it so, such a success, really. It was a yeah. great programme. Brian, can you also tell us a little bit about you on uh, This Is Your Life? You yeah. <clears throat> was that a huge surprise for you? Was that a it shock? was, honestly, it was a shock, <laughs> complete shock. Because the day before they filmed, Brian Blessed, my, my, my friend Brian, who you know I did judo with back in 1964 when I came back from Japan, he, um, it, he was a very good friend. And uh, they, they said to me, my, my agent said to me, would I go and help him because he's doing a film he was doing this film, you know, where, I don't know, I can't remember what it was called, but where he was, he was the king of the Hawkmen, you know. Um, Flash Gordon, wasn't it? Yeah. 
He said, and he needs to learn a couple of things. He said, can you help him, you know, train him for the Flash Gordon film? Of course, I went there thinking it was Flash Gordon film, and it wasn't. It was, it was This Is Your Life, and that's how they caught me. Ah, oh, the trick like that. Acid. Uh -huh. yeah. But I didn't know anything about it. I did, I did not have a clue. Yeah. Did not have a clue at all. It's, it must be quite shocking when you walk into somewhere and like... It was unbelievable because it, I did the thing with Brian Blessing in the morning and then they rushed me off to a hotel, kept me in a hotel right, for about three hours, it would give me food and all that, and then took me to the studio, you know. I, I, I didn't know until I got in the studio. When I got in the studio, all my family, I mean, my mum's my got 11 brothers and sisters and my dad's got nine brothers and sisters. So they were all there, everyone was yeah. there. That yeah. was a complete shock. And, and the funny thing was, the night before they actually caught me, I was at a wedding with one of my cousins, and, I, oh, and they knew that I didn't know, and they yeah, were told not to say it. Yeah. Uh, was it disappointing or quite? Uh, <laughs> no, it was, or was it pleased? It was, yeah, it was fantastic. As I mean, like you thought you were going to a film set. No, I thought, mean... yeah, I thought I was going to a film set to do a film. <laughs> but it was fantastic. I mean, it was uh, it was wonderful to have all the family there, and um, it, it's, it, it's a, it was it was the biggest show going, mate. Yeah, it was huge it was back right. in the it day, was wasn't it? Yeah. Show. Um, yeah. So I was very, very pleased with it, you know. Yeah. You also was on uh, Blue Peter and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, Blue Peter. <laughs> all, all the, all the programmes at that time I was on. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think I've done practically every, every, every kid's programme you can think of. Yeah. yeah. Brian, just another judo question for you. Did you ever, who was your toughest opponent? Was there someone regular on the circuit that was a, a challenge for you? Um, you mean in the world? Yeah, or, sorry. Or in yeah. Great Britain, yeah, in the world? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was always the Japanese. Um, and when, when like Fuji was the middleweight champion at my, in my era, when he weren't around, there was another one just as good as him. You know what I mean? Because they, they are, without question, that you know they, they're a, a level above anybody else in the world. Yeah. I mean, you do get one or two people in the world that win the world championship and win the Olympic gold medal, but that are outside the Japanese, but generally speaking, the Japanese are... are it's the way that, I mean, I don't know if you... You know, Japan at the moment is... Nobody gets mugged in Japan. You know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a wonderful country. It's a country of peace and tranquility, and, you know, people get on with their lives. No one gets mugged, no one, you know... Um, the, the, the toilets are beautiful, everything's kept clean. All the people are very proud of their, their country. It's not like that here, is it? No, nah, no. Nah, it's it's obviously not it. like that here, unfortunately. You know nah. I mean, um, that's why I love Japan. That's why I love uh, Thailand. I mean, Thailand, the people are very proud of their country. But here, I don't, there's, I don't know. The pride seems to have gone somehow. Yeah. Uh, can I just ask a little bit about your autobiography, so mindset yeah. of a superstar. Uh, how did you first start to write? Was it written by yourself? Or? No, no. What, what happened was... Um, uh, I, uh, I wanted to do it, and I, the reason I wanted to write about my life story is because, A, I think it's very interesting, which it is. I mean, it, you know, I've been all around the world and, you know, I've done several different things and I've done some, you know, I've, all the funny things are in there. It's a big book, it's, you know, it's a very thick book. Um, I wanted to do it because my, my son's got a, a daughter, um, she's six years old, and I just... Uh, yeah, I want to do it for her, you know what I mean? Yeah, Just for a, a memory. Yeah. Um, so I, I was looking on Facebook, I think it was, or something like that, and I saw this guy that lives in Thailand, the name uh, Mark Gingell, and uh, it said that he was a, a writer. You know, so I phoned him up and said, you fancy doing the book with me? You know? um, and uh, we spent a year, 11 months, a year of writing it. You know, at least twice a week we were doing it. Cause it's, a, it's a very big book. Um, there's a lot in it, and a lot of what I've spoken about today. But and um, he he was brilliant. I mean, he's a brilliant writer. He's written three or four other books which are on the market. You know, um, he's written about Thailand. Uh, he, he goes under the name of Ben Carter, but um, and he's written uh, quite a few little books on funny books on Thailand. Um, but he, he's a very, very genuine person and, and somebody that gets to the heart of the matter, you know what I mean? Yeah. And w which we did in the book. Um, and, 
And it's not only for judo people, it's, it's not only for people that like suicides, it's a, it's a general thing about how, the, how, you, know, how you, 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 you manifest and grow and how the whole thing sticks together. Like we've talked about with the superstars, I mean, it's not just going into the superstars like most of the people did. I, I went into it knowing that when I got on that push bike or when I did the swimming or when I did this, I, there was certain, there's a certain level of precision that I had to have. I had yeah. to have the, the, the handlebars exactly the right distance from the saddle, the saddle the right distance to the pedal and, you know, and all the, all the, so the book is a, is a lot about that, you know. Yeah. It's, the, it's called The Mindset of a Champion. And where, where can people find that if they want to find out? Well, it's on just, Amazon. Uh, Amazon? Yeah. Um, uh, it's called The Mindset of a Champion. It's just, just Google Brian Jackson, it'll come up. Um, but I, I mean, it's great for people that have got children. You know, if you've just, sorry, if you've, if you've got a, a, a child um, and you're bringing them up, I think the book's brilliant for that because it, it goes right the way through my life, you know, from when I was a kid. I had a hernia. I had a very, I've got two scars across here where I, I, couldn't, I couldn't run when I was a kid because this, this hurt so much. I had an operation, um, you know, I used to waddle along. I had the operation and it didn't work and I had another operation two years later and for a long period of my life as a child, I, you know, I weren't, um, well, I couldn't walk properly. I could walk, but I mean, yeah, I could walk, but I... In pain and yeah, discomfort. until I was about eight, seven or eight years old. Um, uh, so it, it would help people that have got children because, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's right the way through the, the whole of my life. So. Yeah, and like a positive mindset for the sort of yeah. goals. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Brian, I'm just going to ask you a little random question. Have you had to, ever had to use your judo in a real life situation? Uh, yes, once. No, only once. Um, and that was in Thailand, funny enough. It was, it was New Year's Eve and I was walking down with, with a friend of mine who's an eighth down at karate, believe it or not, he's an English guy. Um, and his son and my son, they, they were both about 20 years old. And we were walking, it was New Year's Eve, but we were walking down Soy 7 in, in in Pattaya, and there was loads of people going back and forth. It was packed, you know, from one side to the other. And some idiot, two idiots, come up the road on a on a motorbike, which was absolutely stupid because they were, you know, they were nudging into everybody on the way. Yeah, like it, trying it to get down a high you know, street of people. They were idiots being on a bike, and they bumped into my son, you know, knocked him up, knocked him over a little bit, and he he kind of turned. And as he turned, they'd gone away, but I was behind, so. I just put my hand out so he come and he hit my arm. Anyway, he stopped and got got off the off the bike, you know. And I thought, well, this is, you know, you, you, I don't I don't really want any aggravation on New Year's Eve, but you can tell when he, he he was determined. And you know, when you do a bit of karate, and when you do, well, I mean, I did quite a bit of karate. I got up to second down, but when you do karate and judo, as soon as someone comes towards you, you know exactly by the way they stand. You know, it's just like in inside your body, isn't it? Anyway, I knew he was going to kick me. It was a right-footed kick, so I side sidestepped, grabbed the right foot, and did an ochigari on him with the with the with the other leg, and threw him on his back. And as he got up, I just hit him. And the <laughs> other the other bloke came and grabbed hold of me from behind. I threw him over my shoulder, and as he got up, I hit him as well. And they would had enough then. They had enough. I, and I swear to you, I mean, it's it's not. I don't want to be big-headed about it, but. Everybody was clapping. <laughs> big, big group of people all staring. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's the only time, really. Um, it didn't last very long. It was only about, you know, thirty seconds at the most, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't realise you also done karate. Yeah, Can I just ask yeah, a little yeah. bit about that as well? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so when, when did that age? What sort of age did that start? Well, I, it was when I was in Japan. I, 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 as I say, I went when I was fifteen. I was there till I was seventeen, and. When I was about 15 and a half, 16, which got, or you know, nearly 16, my, my dad was paying me, you know, paying to, for my stay there. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, he suggested that I went and tried it. You know, he said, "Go and try it. it. Might help your judo. You know, the stance and the, you know, the way they, the, the feet are on the floor and you're very strong in, in karate." And so I went to Oyama's dojo, which was a big mistake. Fuck me, that bloke, excuse my language. <laughs> that guy was a was a, an animal, really. 
he, Matsuya Ayama, um, he killed the bull in the ring. Um, knocked his horn off first of all and then killed it. Well, I think it was one or two punches, but you can see it. I think it's still on YouTube now, the actual film. So I went to his dojo, and anyway, his dojo was huge. And it had big doors like this, but that you opened, you know, sliding doors. The Japanese, this was in 1961, yeah. 62. Big sliding doors, and it was freezing. I mean, it was so freaking cold in Japan. The snow was down, and I remember going into the dojo and take, you know, taking your shoes and socks off. And he used to give you a, uh, a kendo, um, I'm not sure what they call makawari or whatever they call them, the, the bamboo kendo yeah, things. Know, yeah. And you used to have to hold it above your head and walk around the dojo, sliding your feet around the dojo, like slide, 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 like, you know, toes pointed inwards. And you used to have to walk round and round and round and round. And if your fucking arms come down, he'd whack you on the back of the arse with a... <laughs> and then he'd stand in front of you and he'd, 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 he'd say, kick me. And you know, you don't like kicking someone, do you, really? And he'd go, kick me! And then you'd kick him and he'd go, not hard enough, kick me hard. I want a hard kick. And he used to stand there like a block. And then he would say, stand in karate position. You get, you get your feet ready like that. And he'd put his hands on you like this, just touch you. And he'd go, Oof! and you'd go back like 12 feet, I swear to you. He'd put his hands on you, just go, doom, like that. Just with his wrist and you'd, you'd, you'd fly back, you know. I mean, the guy was a funny, I think something like 13,000 people turned up at his funeral when he oh, died. I mean, he was such a, Big name. He was such a massive name, Matsuyama, and I, I trained with him, um, you know, two or three days a week. In, you know, in so you're just mixing the judo yeah, and the karate yeah, 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 yeah. sort of at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, got, I've got a lovely picture on here of Chris Child. She she did all the uh, stunt work for the Honor Blackman films, and when she did the stunt work, she used to come and ask me about. She was a judo player. But she yeah. used to ask me about the karate kicks and. I've got a picture on here of me, me doing a, one of the kicks with her. Um, she's five foot 11 inches tall. And uh, if I can find it quickly, you can have a quick look, but... Yeah, we, we can flash it up if you Oh, we'll it flash it up after, Put yeah. it up on the, yeah. on the screen. But oh, I'll I'll, I'm right up in the air. Like, like about uh, five foot up, kicking her in the face. <laughs> um, I mean, she's five foot eleven, and she did all the modelling for all the um, stunt work, rather, for on the Blackman films. She just just launched a book, Chris Child, on them. And she's just put a book out in the last like seven or eight months. She's got, a, and uh, I'm on the front page of her. She's throwing me with a judo technique. Oh, blimey! Yeah. So just just going through your sort of life, Brian. Um, as a child, was there anything else that you dreamed that you'd wanted to be if you hadn't gone down this path? Like some kids um, think of being a fireman. A at the time, man. you mean? Yeah, when you was a child. No, not really. No. no. Now there is. Yeah. 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 What, what would you boy do now? <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my fingers are all broken. My bloody arms are broken. I've got broken shoulders. I've got broken ribs. The back's killing me. I've had eleven cartilage operations. Um, is that I'm all from I'm the impact 70, of judo? I'm, I'm seventy-six in October, and uh, I really feel it now. Yeah. Do, you, do you think that, that is all from judo? All impact? from judo, yeah. I mean, it's, well, judo and the superstars. I mean, yeah. you know, that was very demanding training. But I, I, was, a, I was a complete lunatic training. I, mean, I was doing 400 arm dips a day. Oh, you know, people say, oh, crikey, you know, you did 100 in a minute. I did 118 squat thrusts in a minute. You know, where you bring your feet backwards yeah, and forwards. Yeah, yeah. 118 in a minute. It, it was... I think the most anybody else got off besides me was 86. Blimey, me. It's a huge difference. But I was a lunatic, you know. I mean, I, you know, I just trained like a. Yeah, if you, you know, if you, if you've got to train hard, haven't you? You got to. Yeah, if, if, if you're going to do win, something, do it properly. Something, yeah, try and do it got, properly. Yeah. Yeah, you got to go for it. If at, you know, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. They say that, but it's no good trying, trying again if you haven't put the work into it. You know, you've got to put the workload into it, haven't you? Yeah. So, so what, what do you do nowadays, Brian? What's your sort of Well, I, 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 I play golf. I, I, I'm only 18 handicapped at the moment, but I've gone from eight to 18 over the last like seven or eight years. Um, I play golf three times a week. I cycle every day on my push bike. 
Um, I normally do an hour and a half, an hour and a quarter to an hour and a half every day on the push bike. Oh wow, she's still really active. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, I still keep fit. Um, I play golf and um, the rest of the time just enjoy myself, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so Brian, if, if anyone wants to find you or follow you on anywhere, if, if there any websites they can follow yeah, you well, or? Um, I, I, you can contact me on, on um, uh, what's it called? Facebook. Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Um, just just Google in Brian or type in Brian Jackson. I come up. Um, I live a lot of time in in Thailand, but what I'll do after the show, I'll give you a card that you can show. You know, you can put put on. Yep. If anybody wants to contact, me. I run a, um, a uh, an apartment block. We have sixty nine apartments. Well, we have sixty four apartments and five shops. Um, so if anybody wants to come over, it's two two hundred pound a month, which is nothing. Uh -huh. um, and you can you can live there. You get a fully fitted apartment. It's it's fabulous. Thailand's very cheap, and uh, um, we've got a little restaurant downstairs. Uh, we've got a swimming pool. I'll, I'll give you a card. You can put it on. But yeah. that I mean, I get lots of people come over. I mean, Mickey Pierce from Only Fools and Horses comes over. Jimmy White oh, really? comes over. Um, you know, lo loads of people that I know from the uh, from the showbiz side of things come over there and stay with us. Um, I was with Jimmy White two weeks ago before I left. You know. Oh really? Um, so it's nice. You know, we have a we have a lot of lovely people staying there that that come over that uh, you know don't want to be in right the main, in the thick yeah. of everything. They're just a bit outside. It just takes ten minutes to get into the centre of, of town. Um, I've been running that now for what for seventeen years. Um, and we're, you know, we're very busy. It's called View D Apartments, and you can Google it. View D Apartments, Brian Jackson. Um, but it's, it's wonderful. I mean, it's a fabulous place to be. You have a fabulous time there. All right, Brian. We start to wind it up there. Lovely. Thank you ever so much for coming. Oh, I appreciate your time. Oh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Any time, come and see me. It'll be wonderful.